welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. I thought I'd start with a question this time. Do you remember that game? What game's that, you ask? Well, it's the game where there's a sort of a bent wire and you have a loop and you have to sort of move the loop around the wire and if you happen to touch it with an electrical connection made and a bulb lights up or maybe a buzzer goes off or maybe you get electrocuted, something like that. And in this video, what I thought I'd do is to take that game and to add some computing power in the form of a Raspberry Pi. And I'm doing this really for two reasons. One, because it's an interesting Raspberry Pi project and it might inspire to do other Raspberry Pi projects. I know some of you like Raspberry Pi projects. But more broadly, it may be worth because think about what happens when you take a traditional electrical thing and you add some computing power. And suddenly the things you can do with it expand. So, what I'm going to do is to take a, a loop of a garden wire, a, a piece of wood, a Raspberry Pi and some Python code, and we'll see what we could achieve. Right, I've already set to work with my uh, reel of a garden wire, and I've made myself a little uh, thing like this, which is going to be my wire loop game thing. I'm making quite a small wire loop game thing because I want it to be about the same scale as the pie for video purposes. You might want to make a very large one. And I've also put a couple of bits of insulation on the ends of these, uh, this wire. And I've taken a bit of wood and I've cut a bit off and drilled a couple of holes in it. And that will enable us to put the wire loopy thing in like that, which gives us a nice little wire loop game thing. Now, to make it work, I've also done the uh, I guess what we call the loop, which is hardly an elegant construction, but it'll work perfectly well. And I also need to connect this thing into something to make it an electrical connection. So if I take this off like that, I can thread that on, and I can hopefully also, maybe you can see that easier like that, just put that little looper wire over there, that'll be fine, and put that in there, push it down like that. There we are. We now have a basic wire loop thing. Effectively, I've built a switch where you can move this along. If that hitch on there, it'll, um, it'll make a contact. And we can use that contact with a connection on the Pi. I should just point out, to make this thing work properly, I found I had to use a little bit of a very fine sandpaper just to uh, sun down the, the wire here. I think maybe the wire's got a bit of coating or something on when, when you buy it. This is cheap garden wire and they found it wasn't absolutely connecting perfectly with the loop. So I did that and it works very well. So let's take this and put it with the Pi. And uh, here it is. We've now got our wire loop thing, which is all wired in to a breadboard, which in turn is wired into a Raspberry Pi. This happens to be a Raspberry Pi 3. You could use any Pi you want here. What I'm showing you here will work at any Pi, Pi 0, Pi 1, 2 or 3, whatever you want to be using. And basically what I've got in this setup is the wire and loop effectively switch plus another momentary push switch plus an LED so we can see what is going on. And in fact, it actually is running and working. You'll see if I uh, touch the wire there, hopefully you can see the LED here lights. It's a bit difficult to see that, uh, but hopefully you can just about see that is working. Yes, I'm an LED. And uh, I'll show you how that's working in a second in terms of the code. But basically what I've got here is three GPIO pins in use. One GPIO pin is being used as an output to run the uh, LED. And then two other pins are being used as the contact effectively here. One input is for the wire and loop itself, and another input is for the switch. And if we look at the wiring diagram, you can probably see that a little bit easier. We basically got Pi GPIO pin 18 used as an output to run the LED. Pi GPIO pin 7 used as an input pin for our wire and loop, and Pi and GPIO pin 16 used for our switch. And I picked the particular pins largely to try and make this diagram as easy topologically to show you as possible. You'll see that the switch and the loop are wired in through a current limiting resistor and a pull down resistor. And if you want to know more about how I'm using and why I'm using current limiting resistors and pull down resistors there, you should look back to my video on the Raspberry Pi GPIO inputs. And there's also a current limiting resistor being used with the LED so we don't blow that up. So that's the basic setup. And I'm sure you're wondering now, how, how am I doing this? Uh, how is the code actually making this work? Right, here we are on the Raspberry and Pixel desktop, and I've run up idle, the interactive development environment where I'm writing some Python 3 code. 
I would note here this is Python 3 code. I've used Python 3, which you'll find from the menu is uh, sitting there. You've got the choice of Python 2 or 3 in Raspbian, but people keep telling me to use Python 3 these days, so I am. It makes very little difference to code other than the formatting of some of the print statements, but this code will run in either version of Python if you want it to. But basically what it does, this is our first initial attempt is to get things working. I'm importing a couple of libraries, the GPIO library as GPIO and the time library because I want to execute a time function. And then setting GPIO things up, I'm using set mode to set the board numbering convention, which I, I happen to find easiest to use because you can see exactly where the pins are that way, I, I think. And then we're setting pin 18 to be an output to control the LED, uh, pin 7 to be an input for the actual wire and loom contacts, and pin 16 to be an input for our button. And then we're going to print uh, press button to begin. I've got a button in this system because I realized I wanted a way of um, breaking in and out of the loop. Uh, we're going to use it in this piece of code without actually just simply crashing the thing or having to read the keyboard, so it's easiest just to use a button there. And what this does is it basically has a while loop which is waiting for the button to be pressed, so as long as the button is at a zero state, a, a false state, it keeps executing a pass command, and as soon as, it gets, as soon as the button's pressed, it'll get onto the next bit of code. And as you can see, it says, print, now try your luck, press the button to come to an end. After that, we have a debounce statement, which basically is waits 0.5 seconds just to check uh, the button wasn't flickering around when you pressed it, and it's gonna go straight to the end too rapidly. And then we have a while loop, which basically says, while the uh, button hasn't been pressed again, uh, keep checking for the status of our wire and loop contacts. And if the contact is true, it'll turn the LED on. If it's false, it'll turn it off. Once we press the button and say all finished then, and then we clean up GPIO things as you always should at the end. So that's the basic bit of code. And if I run that, I'll press run and run module. I could press F5, but you can't see my keyboard, so I'll use the menu. And if we flick over to the thing itself, um, oh no, we won't, we'll wait for it to say, press the button to begin, and I'll flick over to the unit now, and I'll press the button, and I press the button, the screen now says, now try your luck, press the button to end. And as you saw in the previous segment, if I now touch the uh, wire and loop together, it's obviously reading a contact. That's all this particular piece of code does, other than the fact, if I get fed up with it, I can press the button, and it'll say, all finished then. So that's set things up. We're not doing there anything more complicated than you could do if you simply had a, a bulb and a battery or LED and a battery. So let's add a bit more sophistication with some more sophisticated code. So here we are back again, I've added to the code. It starts off exactly the same. All this initial stuff is exactly as we had it previously. But if we go down here, we then, after we've uh, press the button and under the debounce, we set up a counter which I've called score, which is starting initially at a value of zero. And what we're gonna do here is we're now gonna actually have the thing keep count of how many times you've actually made the contact between the wire and the loop. So here, as you can see, it is going to uh, turn on the LED, but also increment the catch to count, er, uh, shouldn't I? I can't even spell here, Never mind. And um, we'll do that and then we'll actually see it'll have score equals score plus one if it has actually made a contact, and then it'll turn the LED off if it's not there. And again, I need a debounce because if we didn't have something like that, the contacts would be made intermittently so many times when you hit the wire, you, you would have ludicrous scores. Even 0.1 seconds doesn't, doesn't give you a lot of time to not necessarily make a, a contact by accident if you like, but 0.1 seems to be reasonably good. So it runs that, and then when we press the button to come out of this loop, we've still got the same thing here waiting for the button press. It'll then print the score and clean things up at the end. So if we run this piece of code and we run the module, all we also need to save it, of course I do, of course I'll do that, that's saved. And it'll run the code, again press button to begin, and I'll press the button to begin. And uh, there we are, it's now running, I can now try my luck. So if we go to the unit itself, um, I can move around and um, if I happen to, uh, oh, I pressed the thing there, deary, deary me, but I'll try and get across the rest without doing any problems. Yeah, I've done that there. And if I pressed, oh dear, I called it, that was, that wasn't fair, was it? Deary me. On the end, if I press the button now, I've got a score of 13. It thinks I touched that 13 times. That's a debounce issue. We could try all, all sorts of, of levels now to try and get that. If I don't debounce at all, just to show you, um, if I take out 
that from there entirely. Let's just get rid of that for a second and file and save and file and run module. And uh, press the button, starts the thing off. If I now go across here and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, I, in theory, we think I've pressed that nine times, don't we? If I press the button, I look at that, I hit it about 23 thousand times. So clearly um, deep bouncing is very important here. So we could put that code back again. Control V, put that back. And we could have maybe a longer value. We could have say point um, three. The only problem is the longer we make that, the less sensitive our, our circuit becomes. So it's a bit of a, um, it's a, bit of a, a, a balance really. If I run that again. There we are. And we'll press our button. And now I'll go along and I'll try and just, I'll deliberately go one, two was not deliberate. But in theory, let's try and hold it to two. So in theory, that's a two. What's it come out as? And in the end, it thinks, well, it was a two. So actually, maybe that's an accurate way to do it. So there we are. We've now got the system running. So we know how many times we actually touch the loop. Right. Here I am back again. I've added a bit more to the code now. So it analyzes your score at the end. We've got these extra if statements on the end. So it's saying if a score is zero, it tells you you're amazing. If it's one, two or three, it says you're not bad. If it's more than three, it says you're terrible, which may be not terrible. Maybe you just had a bad day. Anyway, let's see if it works. If we just go to a run this module, again, press the button to begin. We press the button to begin. It's uh, asking us to try our luck. Let's see if I can get around here and uh, not touch it at all. Deary me, this is more difficult than you think, particularly under movie lights and when you're being recorded. Oh, I'm always going to get there. I've got there. So that will be a good, oh, hit it at the end, but that was an accident, wasn't it? That's the way this thing is positioned, I think. And I scored three in theory, which is not bad at the end. I must have hit it multiple times at the end there. Um, never mind. Let's let's try it again. I want to get across it properly. Do you think I can do it? And uh, run module. Oh, the suspense is killing us, isn't it? And uh, press the button to begin. I'm going the right way this time, aren't I? I haven't got the thing at the end to try and get it wrong. Get round there. Next week, I'll make a video um, where we can watch paint drying, but um, I won't really, guys, no. Oh, it's not fair. Oh, that's going to be rubbish as well, isn't it? And uh, I scored one. It obviously, uh, it said it's not bad. I want to do it properly. Should we have one more go and then I'll give up and uh, we'll all go home. At least I won't go home because I'm home already. Anyway, let's just uh, press run module. Final attempt for me to get it right. And uh, there we are. I could just do another take, couldn't I? But that would be cheating. Let's see if I can get all the way around here without causing any trouble? Yes, that should be good. I've got to hold it down there. And if I press the button, there we are. I scored zero, which means I'm amazing. And I think with the pie having told me I'm amazing, I think we will call it a day. So there we are. I've added some Raspberry Pi computing power to that traditional electrical only wire and loop game. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.